Hello, hello, and welcome to Paint Minis Live. I'm your host, Bill T, coming at you from the Creation Cave. I've got the hiccups going, so if it uh, if it starts up, I apologize, but I'm I'm trying to hold it back. I'm sure you know how it is. Uh, tonight we are going to be um, we're going to be working on mushroom warriors that we got from our. Um, <clears throat> Dungeons and Lasers set from Cal uh, in trade for his Abyssal Dwarves and Orcs, which I'll be sending out um, at the end of the week. So we have uh, that to thank Cal for, but from that set, we've got ourselves some Mushroom Warriors to paint up. I've already primed these guys, so I don't really have to go over that step. Uh, looks like one of them kind of came off their their bottle of uh, that I was using as a um, a stand because I put a lot of them on uh, corks and stuff. I've I've built a bunch of them. I just haven't primed them. So anywho, we have two guys to work on immediately, and then I'll break out the um, I'll break out the uh, hot glue gun. There you go. That's the word. I'll learn how to speak English someday. Um, but I'll break out the hot glue gun and we can get the third one all situated um, on a something to paint him on. So we're going to hop into it. How, how do you paint mushroom men? I guess uh, I think since there's such a variety of creatures in this box, uh, again, it's a massive box, it's like 32 models. Um, it is uh, it's, it's a pretty nice set. Uh, from the Dungeons and Lasers crew. The only uh, thing that I can think of that I would like to change um, is the fact that the instructions are all digital. There's not an actual booklet to help you uh, get, you know, guide you in building the models. Uh, you have to look at this PDF and it can be a little wonky trying to figure that out. Uh, so I have, uh, managed to get these guys together and a couple extra in, in the, um, that I have in a little bag, but, uh, how, 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 how to paint each style or at least for me, like what I'm going to paint them. Um, that's kind of, uh, my goal for the next couple of episodes here as we plow through, Another 32 models. I, I'm going to splice in some other projects here and there. Uh, judging by the polls, we're going to be doing uh, these creatures and NPCs kind of first and foremost is going to be the priority. Then we're also going to be kind of in parallel with this. Uh, I've got to get some models to send out to Mythos from Frost and Fist, as well as the Hound from Hound's Armory. And we can do a paint and compare with them. Um, and you guys can see my process here live on stream um, and maybe they're going to stream their process as well. But uh, we'll do that in collaboration with the um, creatures that we're going to be painting from this uh, from this box. The kind of last thing that was a priority for the community was seeing our Warlord Titan be built um, a long time ago. I went and I, I'm just going to kill the music here. I'm sorry. Um, <clears throat> a while ago, it was, it was quite a few years ago. I was on eBay and I was, uh, doing some searches on these warlord Titans. Cause I was like, man, if somebody's getting rid of one of them and it's broken, like I might just buy it up or, you know, and repair it if it's cheap. Um, and at this point in time, there was no actual, like model uh the like forge world did not have their own warlord titan if you're familiar with the 40k stuff i know a lot of a, a lot of the uh viewers are are a bit more into the role-playing games and dungeons and dragons and stuff like that which i also really enjoy uh but again as a painter i started out with 40k and was totally enamored by just the style of the models um and so the biggest, baddest model you could get in this game was this Warlord Titan. And 
the Warlord Titan was this massive scale model, um, which on the tabletop was like having essentially a small toddler standing on a tabletop. They're, they're really massive models. Um, and that's to scale with the rest of the game. I mean, we're talking about little, you know, little guys that are this big or about this size, you know, space Marines. I've got a, um, this guy's missing an arm, but I mean, we're talking about guys that are this, this size. And, and this is something that stands like way, way, way up on the tabletop. Um, and I was totally enamored by it. So I was like, I want to go and find one of these things. And so I hopped on eBay and I eventually found one that was from, there was, there were very few studios doing this. This was essentially a bunch of, you know, the studios that were doing this was a bunch of dudes in a garage or something. And they were either sculpting these by hand or they were handcrafted out of like wood and foam and stuff. Um, the one that I got was from a company called the Titan Manufactorum. And it was just, a, again, a guy in his garage. Um, and it consisted of, um, uh, it consisted of these panels and, uh, you know, it's made out of foam, um, that's glued together with dowels and other wooden bits. And then these, uh, panels, which were 3d printed, I believe on maybe some kind of, uh, this was a very rudimentary 3d printer, um, because at the time 3d prints hadn't been commercialized, but, uh, I found this Titan uh, bought it on eBay and the seller sent it to me. It was totally busted up because um, they had it packed by a different person and all they used was like grocery bags and in the box. So it got sent to me, was busted up. I sent it back to them and said, hey, give me a refund. Uh, they never picked it up from the mail uh, from the postal service. So they sent it back to sender and I eventually got a refund. So it was a free Titan um, and I want to rebuild it. So that'll be taking you know, last priority anyways, uh, when it comes to what we're going to paint here on the stream. Um, and so we'll be doing all three of those things just with different weights on priority of what I'm going to film and, and, and when I'm still working on my cinematography stuff and, and trying to figure out exactly how I want to present that Titan build. But, um, for tonight, Mushroom Warriors, the first step in my mind on any of these creatures is taking a look at reference art, images, and um, things like that. Especially for a Mushroom Warrior like this, uh, they've got some box art uh, for these guys. They are modeled after different kinds of mushrooms. Um, so I thought it would be a good idea to kind of take a look if there were any other different color schemes that would look interesting for them uh, and put them on the model and uh, kind of explore artistically what, uh, what a Mushroom Warrior would look like. Uh, I, and I would suggest that with any model you're kind of looking at painting, uh, by all means, you don't have to paint what's on the box uh, at all. Uh, you don't. You, you could paint it totally outlandish if that's, uh, you know, uh, an outlandish color scheme like pink. And, you know, I've seen people do synth wave type paint jobs and other things like paint how you would like to paint them for sure. Uh, but this is kind of my method to the madness that I use um, and that I think works out for me. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and just do an image search here um, for wild mushrooms uh, to find some inspiration for uh, this guy who's kind of got this taller mushroom shape going on. Uh, we also have this little dude that I've started on. He's kind of a Amanita mascara kind of uh, sculpt and um, mascaria maybe? Not mascara? Mascaria. I think it's mascaria. Um, but uh, anywho, I've started him on that because it, that's kind of what it looks like to me. But I want to find some pictures of mushrooms to get us going. Uh, da, da, da. Here's some images. Let's get the uh, screen up here. All 
All right, wild mushrooms. Here we are. Let's check this out. So it looks like this guy's kind of got a flat top uh, on his on his head. It's very broad. It's not quite a upside down bell shape. This is that kind of Amanita um, style that this this little guy is in. The smaller the two that we have on uh, uh, armature right now. That's that's that guy. Um, so it's looking closer, but not quite. I wonder if there's any. These are pretty close. Let's see. Da da da. Looks like there's a decent amount of yellow in the mushroom world, which is interesting. Um, obviously, there's a lot of browns being. Uh, around in, in the mushroom world too. But just trying to get an idea, ooh. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. I like this. I don't know what this is called, but I think this is, this might be a winner. It's almost like a apple um, style mushroom. Let me get my other camera rolling here. Hey, how's it going, Road March? Good to see you. Welcome, welcome. Taking a look at some reference images for our mushroom warriors. I'm going to pop on the uh, extra camera here. So, yeah. I have, uh, I've already started on this guy. He's got kind of that Amanita uh, red and white dot deal going on with him. As you can see, I kind of did a, a orange at the bottom and then, you know, two thirds above with the red and it worked out pretty well for a little bit of a transition there. And then it gets really, really red at the top. But this is our first warrior. This is our second and he's, he's much more long stemmy and has a, has a big cap to him. And then our third is a, a bit more, um, a bit more bulbous, kind of looking fungi warrior. So I'm looking for as I just start dropping them. <clears throat> oh boy, that one. we are okay before I accidentally step on it <laughs> anywho those are our mushroom warriors um, that we have to paint tonight I'm thinking that this uh, this image right here uh, this one is looking like a prime candidate because I like the green we have uh, a very red color scheme with the Amanita guy uh, this guy could kind of go with a green kind of you know, um, Granny Smith apple style color scheme. I'm not really seeing too many others that I'm like, oh yeah, that would, that would look really cool. Um, there's a lot of browns and yellows in the mushroom world. I haven't seen many other colors that would, um, in these reference images that are striking to me. Um, Kind of thinking that our bulbous guy is going to be going after this. I think this is a lion's mane, but I think we're going to be going after this for our more bulbous chap. So we're going to go with this for our reference image. I'm going to get the uh, the music rolling here. There we go. And we're gonna we're gonna probably start this off uh, with what are we gonna do? I think I'll just go with white. I think we'll start with white. White is a hard color to airbrush. Um, but that is a okay. I 
tipped over my air compressor. <laughs> So I'm going to fire up our compressor here. We're going to get it up to, um, before I do that, I got to remember to change the hose. I don't think we're going to be needing all of the detail for now, at least of the, uh, the infinity probably settle for our premium Chinesium airbrush. So Road March, tell me how it's been. What's been new? What you been up to? Anything fun? Hopefully something fun. Maybe. Got our compressor coming up to uh, coming up to snuff. Let me get the camera readjusted here. So now that I have the spray booth set up, I can go ahead and uh, get you guys in there. There we are. Okay. Do a quick little havesy havesies. Yeah, that'll work out just fine, I think. Okay. So we have our bold titanium white. We're going to be using tonight that's gonna be our our base color they are um, I think I'm gonna do most of it in white you know we're kind of gonna go down that zenithal path um, a little bit uh, but for the most part the most of the mushroom uh, that I'm seeing on the reference images are mostly white um, we're probably gonna use a couple of like maybe a different shade of white maybe go for like an eggshell um just to give it some more texture and curb appeal i guess i'm gonna go ahead and uh start up the paint shaker i'll be right back with you guys
So just in my head, hey, what's going on, Calvinoni? <laughs> where's where's my dwarves? Um, I've I've got them all here. Uh, I have to seal coat uh, the last four that we did, and then um, I just gotta package them up and send them send them all out to you. Uh, so they're gonna be on the on the way shortly. I will make sure that I get you the tracking information uh, with that. Um, so I will I will do that. Uh, what's going on, doll rusty knife? Good to see ya. Good to see ya. We're painting some uh, some mushroom warriors uh, tonight. We have uh, we have uh, this is the first one that I've I've started on. Uh, I this was off stream, but kind of got this uh, Amanita style mushroom warrior going on. And then uh, our next prime candidate is uh, is this taller looking fungal warrior here and this guy I think I'm gonna go uh, I've been using this as a reference image right here this kind of candy apple color mushroom I think we're gonna go or not candy apple it's like granny smith sorry candy apple would be like red I think but yeah he's gonna go kind of granny smith mushroom on it I'm just getting a couple of paints pre-shook real quick before we start. Um, I think this is kind of going to be the uh, going to be the color scheme. We're going to have uh, this pale yellow, uh, which is very very close to white, um, but it's it, indeed pale yellow. Uh, and then we're going to be using uh, bold titanium white, I think, for the highlights on that. We're going to be running. Um, yellow green for some shadow areas on the caps uh we'll use faded green to kind of um make a transition all the way into uh bright yellow green for for the top of the caps so i'm just getting those paints shooken up before we start messing around on the airbrush We should get you over here at some point there, dull rusty knife to come come see the creation cave. It's pretty fun, man. It's 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 pretty fun. Um I still have yet to put up a tour of the creation cave. Um it's essentially a dirty basement, but just with some more schnazzy uh like industrial tables and lights and all kinds of crazy stuff. But it's fun. Um, all right, what's going on, ETC? Good to see you. Good to see you, Calvinoni, the one and only. Um, you you did dungeon. Oh, okay, okay. So you you did the the second mushroom warrior. 
you said you painted up or, or like the second was it the second set i don't know i think they released their stuff kind of in waves right um let me get some of these other paints out of the way All right, cool. Now that I'm a little bit more organized, pardon me. We'll get the uh, spray booth on. It's gonna get a little bit louder with that in the background. It looks like our compressor is now up to speed. Get this maybe moved over a little bit. What's going on, geez booger? <laughs> I'm always the fun guy. I try to be fun. Um, so yeah, we've got, we've got our mushroom warriors here. I'm just starting on this guy and the Amanita guy kind of just needs his, uh, white coat because I kind of just wanted to mess around with that a little bit, um, on my own and I did the cap for him. So he's already, he's already down. We got five live chat lounge cats in the studio tonight. Um, so thank you all for being here. I appreciate it. We're gonna start off with, um, let's do faded, uh, da, 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 no, pale yellow, that's what it was. I'm gonna start with pale yellow. So I'm just gonna get the airbrush ready. Uh, as usual, we're gonna go um, with our airbrush flow improver couple drops right into the pot there. We're gonna add our pale yellow. Depending on how thick this comes out of the bottle. Um, I may add some more. Just one drop, two drops, three drops. It'll probably be more than enough. I think we're gonna need just a little bit more flow improver. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and clog that, and we'll do the bubblies to mix the paint. So I got my pre-order in for the uh, Halo Flashpoint game. I'm excited about that. I, I honestly... Uh, can't wait because it looks really fun um, I watched a couple of game demos from uh, that were on YouTube because they had that at Adepticon and it looked really fun it's like essentially Halo multiplayer right on the tabletop and I'm looking forward to it this off just a hair. So I'm going to get a nice, um, I'm actually going to go ahead and paint my glove here real quick just because a lot of colors are going to go over this. And if I paint it on my glove, uh, I can see what the colors do as they go over one another. So we're just gonna do a quick base coat on this guy. He's, he's just gonna get transformed. We'll put a second skin on him. I'm gonna, it's not quite a zenithal with this color, um, but I am gonna leave some shadow behind with our original dark gray. Um, primer that we have on this guy.
I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do their weapons. Whether I want them to be more of the stem of the mushroom, or if I want it to be more of like wood from a tree. Not 100% sure on that one. Kind of build this, build this up on on him layer by layer. Really carefully. If you don't have an airbrush uh, at home, I'd just say po pick up uh, the spots that are high highest up on on your model and work from there. Because um, essentially, you'd be just targeting the high points on these guys, anyways, uh, for your for this step. And just fill them in with that color. The airbrush has a little bit of an advantage to it where you can kind of directionally get get your shadows. Um, I'm still going to spray the under bits of him just a little bit so that that idea that it's all one color stays true. But I'm not really going to go heavy in the areas that are supposed to have shadow. It's just a little light dusting of paint on there. Yeah, pretty, pretty nice start. <laughs> Mushroom warriors don't skip leg day. Yeah, for sure. Collecting chaos, good to see you. Welcome, welcome. Sportsman. Oh, you guys and your puns. I, I get, uh, every time I... I stream. I feel like I get a, a free ticket to the uh, to the nerd comedy club. It's great. I'm not gonna lie. I love it. All right. So we are getting pretty close to my liking on our fungoid warrior here as far as this coat goes just kind of hit his face a bit more um, there we go very nice okay now we'll get some actual color in on him I tend to use this dark neutral gray or like uh, black a lot just because it saves me a lot of time especially with the airbrush um, with making shadows if I, I actually would say if you're doing this at home uh, with a standard brush um, I'd highly recommend uh, maybe using white instead and just going from white and adding the shadows in by brush with like a gray or something and then working your way back up to white or a whiter color I should say pardon me pardon me just gonna clock my mic real quick for your listening pleasure Uh, next up, we're going to be going down with, uh, let's see here, do I want to go faded green or yellow green? We'll go yellow green, I think. Let's see what this... Oh boy, we've got a an unsealed pot of paint. Cause for celebration there, friends. Opening a new paint bottle is a good feeling in my opinion. 
Look at that color. That is interesting. It's kind of a minty, minty green color. I think we're gonna maybe start with that uh, around the outside of this. That is, that is a wild color. I like it though. So, I have a lot of these models. There's there's a ton of models in here. There's another dragon, so we'll be going on the uh, Paint Minis Live. Uh, we'll be doing its third dragon in nine, ten months worth of, you know, how long we've existed. So, yeah. It's, it's a lot of dragons we've done up. Uh, but... I'm looking forward to the dragon model in here too. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm getting really good at painting dragons. Three drops of paint would do it. I think that's going to be more than enough. And then we're going to just mix the paint in the cup real quick. Nice. And now here's where that glove trick kind of comes in handy. I can see on my glove here when I spray it what it's going to look like over that original color. And at kind of the various thicknesses, it's a very, very subtle transition there in color, but I think it works out just to what I'm looking for. So we're going to start off on this top cap here. shot here but it's a very very subtle that 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 first color um, it's basically just tinted that uh, original white yellow just a little bit um, and I think for the better I'm going to go ahead and uh, next we're going to go with this uh, yellow green. This is the darker color. It's like a light olive drab. I just hope that won't mean your painting will be, be a dragon. I'm not sure. Might have had a little bit of a... Uh, Typo in there, collecting chaos. Painting will be dragon. Like, oh, like drag, like dragon, like boring? Or dragon, like dragon a sack? I had a good time playing Mortborg last night with uh, D and Disability. 
for Roleplay Wednesday. If you uh, if you hadn't had a, a chance to catch it, uh, it was it was pretty entertaining. Um, we had a good time. D and Disability set up a wonderful setting for us. Um, I ended up I ended up dying uh, to my own uh, stupidity. <laughs> Which was uh, kind of funny. The character had a lot of quirks to it, and it was, uh, but it was, uh, what a blast. Uh, had a lot of fun with Uncle Brat in there too, playing um, Sarotan, the fighter, and uh, who had a Poochie companion. Alright, so now I'm gonna go and see what this color is gonna look like. over the last, and I think that looks pretty good. I'll just have to be careful on how, uh, careful on uh, how much we spray of this because it is quite the color transition. We're gonna kind of work, oh, let me just move the camera over ever so slightly for my own comfort. So, uh, I'm just going to very lightly open up the nozzle on the airbrush. There you have it, kind of a, more of a color transition between the two now, uh, at least on the top. I'm gonna start to selectively get bits like these little, these little guys in here with the, uh, with the airbrush. <laughs> oh, gotcha. I, I, bingo, all right, got it. What else are Pete doing in there? I think we may maybe need a little bit more flow improver in here. Just a couple drops. I think I made it a bit too. A bit too thick. There we go. Could we place this green? I think we're gonna maybe do this. this chest a little bit. I think it's kind of more about subtlety with these guys, if I'm going to be 100% honest. Um, there's going to be some pretty simple color schemes for these guys. sword too.
Yeah, okay. So I'm pretty satisfied with that as a start for our green. I mean, I kind of did the cuffs on his legs that color green, but you know what? We'll we'll give it a shot. We'll do we'll do just a little bit on his legs. We'll kind of just selectively pick out some of the muscle grouping on his legs here. We we'll gave it a little bit of a random. Give him a little bit on his back too. That's a good suggestion. I think I think that's gonna add a bit to our model. Again, we're gonna try and be just a hair selective about where we're putting this. I think that's, that's looking mighty fine. Right there. I just kind of want it to be here, here and there. There's little touches of, of green just everywhere on them. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and now we're gonna step it up to like some serious highlight action. We're gonna get into this uh, ridiculously yellow green. Um, and you'll start to see where all of our previous work is coming together uh, between our uh, kind of fade from the white to the kind of mint green. You'll see it all kind of come together after this next coat. What's going on, Scrub Sapien? Good to see you. It's one angry mush mushroom man. I, I would agree. It's looking pretty mean. This we won't need much of at all. I think I'm only gonna put like a drop or two of paint in here. Two. Sweet beans. Again, yeah, this is our um, bright yellow green. It's essentially just neon. Neon green in a, in a pot. Or a uh, bottle, I should say. Yeah, I think you're right about that road march, that the uh, a little bit of shadow will make it stand out. I'm sure I'm going to wash these guys. So again, uh, just to show you the process, uh, we have, uh, now we have our green layer and I can kind of spray in any old little area and see what it's going to do to the color scheme as we build this up. It is ever so slightly greener. I may even put some white in that depending on what it does to our model. Now you can see just how really vividly green that is. It's 
So I think this needs a little bit of texture, in my opinion, uh, as I'm just kind of checking this guy out. So we're going to add in some darker colors because we've started with white and we've gotten progressively lighter, but now we have to add something a little bit darker in there. Um, and I'm thinking, you know, since I'm seeing a lot of brown in these reference of, uh, images of mushrooms, I'm going to go with some brown spots. And I think that's going to look, uh, I think that's going to look really nice. Now that that is shut down, you can kind of see it here under the uh, incandescence. Well, what are these? You know, strip lights. Uh, kind of the same stuff you'd find in the hobby store. Uh, but I, I think this is looking really nice. All right. I'm gonna just reset the camera real quick. to do it. So I don't, I, you know, these guys are going to be pretty simple, I think. I think at least this guy is. Uh, it looks like he's, his top is still kind of drying off, but I don't, I don't see why we couldn't add in a little bit of this, uh, Reichlin flesh shade wash just kind of on his uh, gills. I think, yeah, mushrooms have gills, right? Wow. So, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. See how that works out for us. Being a bit more selective with the the wash here than I would uh, normally be. Usually, I just kind of dunk the models in here, but I'm not really looking for um, a lot of over coverage. More or less, just looking to kind of get the brown to commingle itself. Alright, 
it needs to go. really sell this I'm gonna have to put a little bit of this brown essentially everywhere so that I can find all the nooks and crannies and all the really cool detail that's in the uh, in these mushrooms here That's kind of what we've we've ended up with here. And I think that is looking very nice. And now you know way more about mushrooms than you ever wanted to. <laughs> I suppose in a way you're right. Pardon me, as I just kind of move this thing around, I'm still you know, doing these really tight shots and then getting kind of into the paint job as it's really starting to come together. Um, I kind of forget sometimes that there's a camera here and the more I move the model around, uh, the less you get to see of it actually being worked on. So I'm essentially pin washing now in between his the, the larger muscle groups uh, on his legs.
Pardon me, everybody. Again, going around with the camera here. We're going to do just the same thing going all the way up the model. Carefully adding the brown wash because this um, this wash doesn't really reactivate very well. It's one of the older style washes um, from Citadel, and I'm just ever so carefully. I mean, I'm using it like a paint essentially, but. This is kind of the nuance part of painting. These little bits that take some time. Um,
almost done here. Getting pretty close anyways. Make his eyes to be a little bit darker. With the wash. There we go. Right. So that look is looking um, pretty fine and dandy to me. It looks a little wonky right now, but I'm sure we can. Once it dries, it's gonna it's gonna look very nice for us. Um, we can also clean it up a little bit too with uh, with some. Transparent green, excuse me as I drop some things. All right, so this guy is looking looking pretty gnarly. Um, I think I am probably gonna go over and do the uh, Now that I'm kind of seeing it, it is a little bit brown. It's quite a bit brown. So I'm going to use some pale yellow uh, to kind of paint his face and some other places. nice don't leave much room for error I I wish like um, YouTube had channel points like twitch has because I would definitely be awarding some joke points out there you guys have you guys with the puns are just hitting it tonight So again, same tactic with the with the glove. Having a glove really helps with this stuff. Okay, now you're gonna be paying into the dad joke jar. Cheeseburger. <laughs> Cheeseburger. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I, the, the, I'll give you. It, it was it was pretty good. It was pretty good.
rushing in. Don't want to get in truffle for your puns. <laughs> oh boy. By the way, I think I just painted half of this off, off, uh, off the camera shot there. I'm just going to bring you guys in fully. I don't think you need to have me looking at my head <laughs> the whole time. Go check out Goober Town, Goober Town Child. Da, da, da. Yeah, 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 I've seen Goober. Um, I'm, I, I've, uh, I've checked out his stuff before. Uh, it's got some great uh, tips, tricks, and tutorials over there for sure. Um, what is it? Mid Midwinter Minis too. I think they're they're another great source for tips and tricks. So another pro strat that I use is if you think that you went a bit too light or a bit too dark with your color choice, just paint it with the rest of the model and eventually you'll start to get a broader picture of what's going on. Um, if it looks uniform, it's going to look pretty pleasing to somebody. Just, you know, you can kind of see how this guy's got this... Uh, I guess it's more or less like a camo pattern we painted on him at this point. Um, But I think it looks pretty nice. Um, especially when you start to see it all coming together uh, like this. Road March, you are you are on this war path, my friend. You you just you desperately want to see this twelve hour painathon where I where I work myself into a stupor and then need to need to <laughs> drink to recoup. <laughs> Must have been born from a mushroom. Okay, I give that a solid 6 out of 10. That's pretty good. That is, it. You, I mean, you somehow stretched mushroom to mush womb. I mean, that's, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Yeah. 
Uh, okay, now I see why. You you want to see those nice thin lines get turned into blobs. I see what it is, you hooligans. I see, I see. Mercury Wells, welcome, welcome. Good to see you, Mercury. Nineteen hours of of mini painting, you legend. That's yeah, that's good. That is pretty nuts. That is that is quite a long time to paint. <laughs> 5 points to Gryffindor for uh, for that one. There, cheese booger. Yeah, I have a feeling I I could I could lose those lines pretty quick. I can tell when I'm getting really tired. Um, towards the end of a, a long day or some such. I gotta back this down a little bit. I tend to draw the mini closer to me. Um, just over time. Simple matter of fact. Do not have to pick up a paintbrush for nearly two weeks after after you were done with that. Because I could totally see that. At this point, um, I'm not. I'm, I'm kind of doing some of these highlights, but it's more where I think the shine of him, or it, I guess this this is a genderless mushroom. Um, for sure, but I'm kind of just seeing where I would suspect the lights hitting it and giving it giving it a bit of uh, some highlight from there uh, in the different areas I'm not really concerned about I guess where the lights coming from there's got to be a light source and blah 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 I'm not super worried about that it's gonna turn out just fine either way but um, 
I'm kind of just picturing where some of the light's going to hit this guy. Obviously, his keister. He's he's got a bodacious mushroom booty. Um, so we're going to highlight that, but we're we're going to find other places like on his muscle groups and so on and so forth that look like the light would just hit there. Um, it's a way to add a bit more dynamic to it. Kind of, it's a it's a comic book style, I suppose. Um, if you will. It's gonna make him look a bit more slick. Like he's fresh out the smomp. Well, I mean, look at that. He is, he is like packing. It. It is, it has got, I, I, there's no, it's a fungi, it's, it's I don't, <laughs> I feel like somebody's going to clip that. I'm going to find it on, on the Paint Minis Live Discord at some point, <laughs> just like later on down the line. Hey, Bill, you remember this episode where you were talking about this mushrooms booty? Oh yeah, I remember those days. Remember, folks, don't be afraid to move your models around, you know, have fun with it. In my mind... Um... My brush hand is doing a lot less of the work than my other hand, where I'm moving the model around. I'm putting it upside down, I'm throwing it all around. Have fun with your paints. Trust me, it, it works. You'll make interesting models. The more you move it around, and, it, and it's just easier on you. Trust me, it's, it's just easier on you. Look at those, uh, what, what would you call them? Uh, oh boy. He must work out, <laughs> that he works out. Yeah, I, you know, uh, I try not to get into, you know, a, t a ton of, um, I like to keep it pretty mini centric around paint minis. Um, but one thing that I, you know, throughout life have kind of, uh, struggled with just a hair has been, um, uh, I guess, uh, me like my metabolism. I'm one of those genetic beings who has a pretty slow metabolism. And I always thought that it was just that way. I started working with uh, Kyle Schwant. Um, he's been doing some physical training stuff with me. And I found out it was because I just wasn't eating. Um, and I wasn't, I wasn't eating like horribly um, but I, I just wasn't eating as regularly as I probably should have been. And it was causing my metabolism to kind of go out of whack. So when I started eating more regularly, um, I've started to slowly kind of fix some of those issues with my metabolism. And, uh, it's, it's worked some mighty fine wonders. I tell you what. So 
So as you can see, you know, the more that we've kind of gone through this, it's gotten gotten a bit more tiger striped, but I don't know. I kind of like it uh, on the camera to me. I don't know if it's showing up for you, but um, just uh, when you're looking at this from a little further away, it looks uh, it's looking quite nice. Um, let me just back the camera off a little bit once. Yeah, right about right about there. Yeah, right about there is where I'm kind of eyeballing this thing from a distance. And it it looks interesting. It looks nice. Um, I think it can probably work with that. Um, now I'm not sure if somebody's going to use this as an evil mushroom or a nice mushroom. I'm not 100% sure. So I think we're going to leave it as a nice mushroom and just not, not necessarily paint the eyes. Um, the cap, on the other hand, I feel like I kind of want to dry brush that. So I'm going to get a little bit of that uh, that same ye pale yellow we've been using. Just do a quick... Yeah, yeah, I... Um... Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sure. I just, you know, I didn't, I didn't have the, like, I guess, know-how. The wherewithal, um, I suppose. I, I, you know, I knew basic healthy eating habits, you know. Eat a fruit, eat a veggie, eat a, um, have some meat, some dairy in there. But I just, I, I wasn't doing it was part of the problem. You know, I just, I just wasn't eating enough. I wasn't eating three meals a day. I was having either one one a day or whatever and it just it was throwing my metabolism off whack so I do the same thing with dry brushing um, I'll find out because you want barely any paint on the brush when you're doing this you can kind of see that uh, if you can build up the layers or not it looks like it kind of just missed my opening there um, cuz I don't want I don't want to actually paint the model I just want the edges to catch this so I have very little paint on here but with this white it's very strong I think we're basically there right on my knuckle um, and I'm just gonna kind of go around and try and it's gonna be a little difficult so I'm gonna flip this guy upside down Just slowly working up the dry brush on on the gills. Let's see if we can get a get a shot of actually just the gills. The 
front still needs a little bit of work, but the back's turning out pretty nice. Pretty happy with that. When you get down to almost no paint on the brush, that's where I kind of take it a step further and I start to kind of, um, you can almost get this weathering effect that will start to mix and blend the color together. I don't want to go too hard or focus too much on any one area, but I'm just going to make all those sharp lines kind of blur just a hair. That's all I'm looking for. Looks like I need a little bit more paint. We're almost done with this guy. He's he's getting pretty close. I'm thinking that's that's pretty close to what I was looking for. Again, if we'll get that extreme close up, but yeah. You can see some of it still needs a little bit of work, but like you can see where it's done some of especially around the um let me get a pointer. Uh especially around, you know, these areas here on the uh the stem where it's kind of blended itself in with the more hard highlights that we've done. Um, and on the body too, it's given some of it a bit, a bit of depth and outline. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to keep just working around a little bit more.
on some of these areas that just kind of want to get a little bit more blended in. I think I forgot to do the other weapon and uh and this guy's this guy's done. This guy's done. He just needs a little bit of this wash on his weapon and and we're we're ready to roll on to our next mini. We got six live cat lounge chat. Yeah, yeah, there's there's the uh, there's the long day of work talking. Blah 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 blah. I have uh, again one day I will learn how to speak English. I think you got to do one more pass with this dry brush on the, the cap. enough for me I think we call that mini complete I am happy with our result get one more quick look around I don't know what to call him, but he looks cool. All right. So we have one dude complete. We've got uh, Amanita Mascara Boy here. Um, I'm thinking this guy's gonna go, you know, we kind of did that green. I think he's gonna be uh, definitely red and orange. Uh, on the box. Let's widen out the view here a little bit. Hey, well, you can uh, you can hang around with uh, with us here uh, collecting chaos while you edit. It's kind of lurk. You wanna? So that's the box art. Not a hundred percent sure. I'm I'm down on that. I think it's got to be a bit less totally white. So we're gonna, we're gonna see if we can work on that. I was really digging this burnt orange color that we were using for Cal's Dwarves. Um, So I think I think we're gonna kind of run the same dry brush tactic with this guy. Maybe I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, first up, we're gonna go ahead and hit him with that pale yellow. I'm gonna go ahead and just make sure I don't lose any of the um, 
paint work I've already done here. Stop burning dwarves. It's called burnt orange, not I'm not burning your dwarves. That's the name of the color. They make great fire starters though. You just huck one into the fireplace and uh, you know, it ends up with a pretty crackling fire. It smells kind of nasty though. All that plastic, but Uh, see if it's worth it to kind of um, mask his uh, mask his dome here. Wow, is that really close to his staff? Okay, come on, get your get your shower cap on there, Amanita boy. Oh. We're breaking out the hot glue gun. I don't think this is gonna necessarily work the way I want it to. But we're gonna try. Send minis to painters in warmer climates. Oh, yeah. It is pretty cold up here, I'm not going to lie. Running deliveries today out in the snow is a little bit brutal. Okay. Now we can get to work. Um, show me a hot glue gun. There is hot glue gun. The dwarven word for treasure is mine! Take a second to warm up. I kind of forgot hot glue guns are not instant instruments. But that's okay, I got time. <laughs> so what's everybody been doing in hobby world? Anything fun, interesting, new, exciting? Dull and boring? I'll even take dull and boring.
OG D&D in 1976. Wow. Talk about a blast. This guy's got a chain around him. I, I, I don't know, like, here, come come in here, check this out. There's there's a chain on this guy. Like he's got he's got shackles on. This and a he's he's holding a head. That's a head. Okay, well this guy is definitely evil. Um Yeah, maybe we go back in with red eyes. He's blind too. He doesn't he literally has no eyes. Um I am so confused at this guy's story. Like, what is he melting? What is going on with this dude? Um, I mean, please feel free to chime in. But yeah, he's got like a chain around his neck and he's got like shackles on his ankles and wrists and he's holding a head. I guess he really didn't like that guy. Um, he's also got pierced uh what would you call those area areolas <laughs> i what is this one's story this one is either um into some serious uh role play that's not a role playing game or what is going on know <laughs> okay that's pretty that's pretty cool all right our hot glue gun should be ready so we're gonna just gonna put a dab on here these are some empty primer bottles that i have I'm just trying to pick off the little tag from the hot glue gun. There we go. Okay, cool. So we got our we got our guy mounted now. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's sad to see things like that happen. Uh Mercury but again, all of these businesses are, are businesses at the end of the day. And, you know, it could have gone down for, you know, many reasons, uh, essentially, you know, whether it was not the best management or um, slow sales. I mean, slow sales can, you know, it happens to a, a lot of businesses. But uh, who who knows why they went under? I guess you know. I maybe you do, but um, I've seen small shops stay around for quite a while um, with good management. You know, sometimes they don't have the cash flow there, but if they're managed well, usually they stay around for quite a while. Um, Okay, you're a small town. Yeah, that can that can definitely do it. I mean, innovation is also, you know, something you got to keep looking to uh, looking to achieve in business. You know, online sales are absolutely huge for those places. Um, Something that I've been finding has been distributors really don't like online businesses in the hobby space. Um, 
And that includes Paint Minis Live. Uh, they just, yeah, they don't like, they, they really want to protect that brick and mortar right now for whatever reason. Well, that's, that's pretty cool. Hmm. All right. I dig it. I dig it. Yeah. I mean, I, I still see quite a bit of successful shops out there. Um, at least in my area, but it, it seems they're really successful because they branch out from the area. Um, they have uh, not only one brick and mortar, but they're also out there selling on many, many different platforms. It's not just uh, online, I mean. You know, they're, they're out there in force um, selling their product in many different places. So I just put that kind of eggshell white off yellow color, or sorry, uh, what is this? Pale yellow color in here. This is just back flowing the uh, airbrush and mixing the paint. You can see how quick that gets mixed up in there. Now I'm just spraying out the uh, little bits of uh, airbrush thinner that's in there. Uh, let's go after our Amanita guy, just in case we gotta go into a part two with this. Um, I can at least have two completed models. Here we go. I think this is too thick. I need a little bit more flow improver in that mix. I feel like that would be a great DJ name, Flow Improver. Welcome to the stage, DJ Flow Improver. Giant bass drop, if you will. Like he's oh, 
As I'm doing all of this, like literally out of the shot, I'm sorry, friends. Let's move you a little bit over there. There we go. And yeah, there we go. Alright, so. And now you're, now you're getting my airbrush. Yeah, I'd agree with that statement there, Mercury, that you need something special. Um, it's, uh, businesses like hobbies and comic book shops, um, I mean, especially with something like paint minis, and I really want to talk about it. But I don't want to overpromise under deliver on anything. But been trying to come up with some more interesting things for PML to be, and um, I think I have a, a halfway decent business strategy lined up for it that I think will everybody will enjoy and everybody will benefit from, at least in some way. So there's our guy so far. We're going to see what other colors we can add to him. I think we're gonna go maybe with a brown tone for the uh, next mushroom, maybe. Been using the same color white a lot. I'm not really seeing anything else for. Yeah. We'll probably end up going hardcore orange for the next one. Okay. 
So we're gonna start off with burnt orange. see now what my problem is. Here we are.
All right, so we've got our burnt orange applied. Let's check out on the uh, check out the chat here real quick while I change colors. Holy man, 35 miles. Yeah, that's kind of a drive to get to uh, get to a shop. I'm gonna run a little bit of thinner through my airbrush too. Just a little squirt to clean off the no the nozzle and the needle. So I've been spraying a lot of paint. We're going to go on to orange now, and then we're going to do some yellow, just some simple tritone color schemes.
So now he looks pretty properly oopy goopy, especially around that stomach area. I'm not sure what the story is behind all that. All right, and we'll finally go on to uh, golden yellow for the uh, kind of top layer of highlights. So here we go. This is this is gonna be the uh, kind of top highlight here.
I think like that, that is looking clean up a little bit over here. It's looking pretty mushroomy. Nice. All right, so we kind of got our, our orange theme going there. The rest is just kind of, uh, is like the metal in his cloak, I think. I think we're just gonna make his cloak some real brown, maybe green, I'm not sure. Yeah, probably a green, all of drab kind of thing. Alright, so coming back we got uh, a really dark green we're going to go for next just for his cloak. I think it's going to look nice. We had a little bit of uh, another kind of green in there for a highlight real quick and uh, probably put a little transparent yellow over this, uh, some of the stuff and we'll basically have a little lion's mane mushroom man in essence.
Alright, we're gonna use this guy because I'm having a hard time finding where my other green went off to, but that's okay. Thanks, Cal. Appreciate it. Purple, uh huh? Hmm. Is he? Purple is usually a pretty royal color. I thought these guys are more of like roaming woodland bandits. That was kind of what I was thinking. So I went with green just because it wasn't, you know, a royal color or anything with a ton of status connected to it. So I think next up, I don't know, we're, we're running about two and a half, I'm going to make a pop. Well, we could do something fun for his armor. Name a, name a color, we'll go for it. We got, uh, we got his, uh, we got some chunks of armor coming out of this guy in a couple places. Uh, we got a chain. I mean, this. What do you, what do you think? We can, we can go with another, a different color too. With the with the armor, you name it, I'll try and create it. They're uh, collecting chaos. Plenty of colors to choose from. Kind of thinking bronze myself.
rusty iron, huh? Okay. We're going to start with mahogany. So we'll start with uh, mahogany here. That's pretty close to a rusty color. And then we'll just do uh, a little bit of painting with some maybe like transparent orange or something to kind of get it where we need it. So, yeah, I like your I like your idea. We could go nuts with the spores, and do something totally different with them. I would agree.
Cool beans, cool beans. Hooey! A lot of painting. Alright. Come on over here. Let's get this guy situated. Kind of get it down here, I guess. I'm just going to clean out my airbrush real quick. I think the rest of this is basically going to be just by hand with your traditional brush at this point, especially for this dude. Pot belly stove, there you go. So next, I think I'm gonna take a uh, I'm gonna take a brush. I really don't mind destroying, uh, but I want it to be pretty small. And I'm gonna go ahead and just stipple like coal black on it. And then we're gonna do some fun with a little bit of orange, just to make it really shine or uh, sell the effect, I guess. Let's see where did. Gonna be a little bit hard to see in the light, but we're gonna take a little bit of this here orange. I'm just gonna put it right on the little wipe that I got here. It soaks up most of the paint. And As I'm doing most of this out of frame. There we go.
Man, that is a tough angle to work with. Sorry, friends. Let me get you top down again. Bam. How does that look? That's it's looking pretty rusty iron to me. Alright, well hey, thanks uh, thanks for joining us, Cal. Good to see you as always. I'll have your orcs to you very shortly here. They're all done and ready to go. We got seven live chat lounge cats in the stream tonight. Thank you everybody for being here. I do appreciate it. Um, I think next up, I'm gonna... Where did my brush go? Okay, so I think next up on the chopping block here, we're gonna go ahead and um, Take a little bit of this, a little bit of this white that we were using earlier, and take a little bit of that, like a drop of that, and then we're gonna take a little bit of yellow. We're gonna really blow the crap out of the yellow here. I mean, it's already two bright colors, but we're gonna like mix them together to get an even further yellow to white. I think we might need even more yellow. I want it to be uh, essentially just a highlight for this color we got going. Yeah, that'll do it. It's like popcorn butter or something. That super weird white.
I like him. I think he looks good. I think that's an, pretty close to another mushroom warrior down. Well, I mean, that sure was productive. I'm starting to lose steam here. Red, purple, blue, and green. All right. I can see it. I think that's probably where I am going to like, I'm probably going to call it here for tonight uh, just because I am running out of steam, but we'll, we have, uh, We have two different guys all painted up. Well, basically all painted up out of our mushroom men. It was pretty simple, easy, straightforward. Just uh, kind of start with your deeper colors and end up at your lighter colors. Uh, so there you go. How to paint a couple of different kinds of uh, mushroom men uh, or mushroom warriors, fungi warriors, I suppose. Either way, lots of fun. Uh, I had a good time with this. I think um, I think this was an interesting experiment. Uh, I think they turned out pretty well, all things considered. Uh, I'm looking forward to finishing up the last guy of the three here and moving on to uh, towards uh, the next creature in the box, which I... What do I have here? I have a bunch of stuff in here. Um, I think the next one I'd like to paint is gonna be this stag. I don't know why, but I'm really digging this stag and I wanna paint it bad. I think it'd be really fun to paint, paint, the, paint the stag. Um, just for funsies. All right, let's get the camera coming back here. Okay, all right. So my glove is all kinds of different colors now. Uh, it's a little shot out, but you can see it's all kinds of different colors now. We went through a lot of different colors tonight. Um, a lot of fun. Uh, go for it painting. Hello, hello. Um, say go for it painting. I've been looking for your stuff. Are you are you anywhere around YouTube or like Instagram or something? Just out of curiosity, because at one point I was just, you know, I check with, you know, the discord and, you know, in the chat sometimes I look, I look around for folks, you know, I, I like to know. Um, I like to know the people that are coming and uh, hanging out in the chat. Do you do you do stuff on YouTube or, you know, social media? Do you do painting anywhere? Just out of curiosity. So I was snooping around one day and I, I thought well, maybe there was something out there. Um, but I couldn't, I couldn't find anything. Um... <clears throat> Well, again, I thought it was pretty successful with the uh, the Mushroom Warriors. Uh, I had a good time painting those guys up tonight. It was a, a breath of fresh air. Um, next week, I think I will be uh, maybe continuing on with, uh, with the painting of these guys. Um, I may I may end up just uh, doing I might I might put together do do some uh, repair stuff for the the Warlord Titan actually on Monday. I think that's that that might end up being the case. Uh, and I'll order up uh, some minis uh, for 
that paint and compare with uh, Mythos from Frost and Fists, as well as uh, the Hound's Armory. I'll order up some minis. I gotta get with them and find out where to ship them to for starters. But um, yeah, I think I think we're gonna go and and uh, do that with them, and we'll have all three projects running at once. Cause hey, why not? It's uh, you know. It's always good to be busy around here at Paint Minis Live. Um, thank you again for joining me. Uh, go for it, painting. Thank you, collecting chaos, cheese booger, uh, Calvinoni, the one and only. Um, Road March, Mercury Wells. Thank you both for coming. I appreciate it. It's always good to see you guys and uh, hear hear what's new. Um, Thanks to uh, Scrub Sapien for sliding on in uh, and ETC um, for for hanging out with us tonight as well. And uh, Dull Rusty Knife, I hope to see you soon, uh, as always. And I hope the fam's doing well. Um, I'm Bill for Paint Minis Live. Thanks again for tuning in. We'll see you again Monday at 845 for some more painting action, whatever that may be. And uh, if you would do the click, click, ding, ding thing, um, wherever those little icons are down there. I don't know. I don't know. Do it if you like it. I'd appreciate it. And we will talk to you guys again very soon. Uh, take care.